Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. and in today's video let me discuss introverted processing. Is there even an introverted process? Uh, what does neuroscience say? I believe that the top-down process of the mind uh, aligns best with what introversion looks like, how it functions, how people use it. And here you have it. Everyone can use this network and everyone can use the reverse uh, extroverted network called bottom-up processing. Top-down processing can be described as uh, pulling information out uh, from yourself and using it to in some ways affect your judgment but also your perception of reality. Now, uh, the bottom-up network re uh, revolves around using information available at hand in your environment, taking information from the environment and using it to boost your judgment or your perception of reality. So, uh, what does this mean? Well, uh, what if, because I wanted to track introverts uh, that have come to develop to be more outgoing. Uh, like if you read Susan Cain's book Quiet, you'll find that there are plenty of introverts out there that see themselves as highly outgoing people. And then you have introverts that talk about shyness and not wanting to sit next to each other on the bus. And you have introverts that talk about anxiety and depression. And you have so many different uh, experiences of introversion. Are some of these extroverts that have developed to be more introverted? Are some of these introverts that have developed to be more extroverted? Uh, is it always negative for an introvert to be extroverted? Is it always negative for an extrovert to be introverted? What I've found is, uh, the question is of course much more complicated than outgoingness or shyness. It's so often that shyness is related to social anxiety. Um, people uh, don't necessarily become introverted because just because they uh, have fears and worries that other people are judging them or that other people look badly on them. And I don't think that's necessarily proof that you're an introvert. Uh, I think that social anxiety should be separated from how we look at introversion and extroversion. So we're left with Carl Jung's uh, suggestion that it was about where you draw energy. Is it the case that for extroverts uh, the outer world is a way to get energy? Is it the case for the introvert that the inner world is how you get energy? So often I find that the MBTI dimensions, they talk about introversion and extroversion as uh, downtime. Introverts need downtime. Introverts need time to filter out what's happening around them, to just go into to their own heads to think. But here it starts getting a little close to intuition and intuitive processing. Because intuitive processing, um, related to the frontal polar network in the mind, uh, requires uh, a higher, deeper processing of information. It requires a more complex processing and more logical processing. And logical thinking in itself requires an inner process of the mind to judge information and to decide if information is correct or not. So it's not that uh, extroverts are people that blindly believe everything they see, and it's not the case that introverts are critical thinkers that question everything and think logically. It's uh, We have to get past uh, these mis smashes and this, these correlations and all, often I find that the question of introversion and extroversion, the biggest overlap is not where you draw energy from. The biggest overlap appears to be with neuroticism and anxiety. Almost everyone who talks about introversion and extroversion talk about anxiety and neuroticism almost in the same sentence. Systems like the Big Five and uh, in so many different models there people who talk about introversion often talk about it as an anxiety. Uh, people who talk about extroversion often talk about it as some form of healthy behavior. I would disagree but I would argue that there is something in there. There is a reason for this association. I think this is a natural association because I believe that introversion and extroversion hinges on how you stabilize your mood. If you think about it, how do you center yourself if you are feeling unstable, shaky, angry, anxious, uh, moody? What do you do? 
often I find that introverts have always been seen as a little melancholic. It's been descriptions of uh, introverts as melancholics that are always a little sad. Extroverts are always jolly or extroverts are always angry and making a fuss about things or introverts are always... Uh, well, there's also like the phlegmatic the description, which is that the introverts are apathic or have nothing at all or are like uh, just, you know, sense uh, calm and tranquil. I find that uh, the choleric description matches an anxious extrovert pretty well. And I find that... Uh, Melancholic matches an anxious introvert pretty well. That the phlegmatic matches a calm or stable introvert pretty well. And that the sanguine type matches a healthy or happy extrovert fairly well. So that suggests there are dimensions beyond the four in, used in MTI. Perhaps we can separate between introverts that have developed to be more uh, phlegmatic calm, stable, centered, and introverts that have developed to be more, say, choleric. Like introverts that um, want to be in their own head but can't be, so they go and become more choleric as a result, more anxious and extroverted. Sanguine types, extroverts that are healthy, calm, centered, jolly. Melancholics, extroverts that have come to become more anxious, moody. So... This is where I am at right now. I'm adding dimensions to each personality type to highlight between healthy and unhealthy variations of each personality type to show how each personality type can grow. And I think introversion and extroversion is key to that. If we know if we are introverted or extroverted, we know about which behaviors we need to engage in to calm our mood, to stabilize ourselves, to find center, to find peace of mind in case we are starting to feel rattled. If we start to feel moody or anxious, we can have a fairly good clue as to how we, what, what we can do to change. So what I'm doing now is I'm creating definitions of introvert and extrovert that relate to mood stability at its core. And I have this to give you. Introverts do indeed favor the top-down network, but not if they are choleric. A choleric introvert is using the bottom-up network, but in an anxious way, in a more effective, angry, more rattled way. They are extroverts, they are outgoing, but they are also a little rattled, a little emotional, a little unstable and shaky in how they use it. The extrovert favors the bottom-up network in grabbing information and taking in information, but the melancholic type is the extrovert that has started to use the top-down network, but they use it in a way that makes them kind of shaky and unstable and moody and <laughs> upset and worried. It's um, the case that this inner side, and I notice this in how extroverts talk about introversion and how they feel about it, that they can enjoy it and they can favor it and they can find it uh, important and uh, uh, they might have come to develop to use it a lot. But they, are also they also tend to be more melancholic types. They don't tend to have that sanguine demeanor often associated with extroverts. More often they tend to have, they tend to have a demeanor that is more uh, sad in a sense. Sad but kind of calm but um, thoughtful, pensive. And uh, sometimes I find that extroverts are people that tend to be positive to new information, information they've just grabbed onto. But people who become more critical when they think about it later on. They take in something positively, but then they come back and they feel negatively about it. Similarly about introverts, I tend to find that introverts are people that are always, they always seem more negative to new information. But then the next day they seem much more positive about it. It's such a shift. It's kind of uh, mind-boggling really to think about. And it uh, puts new perspective what it means to be introverted and extroverted and it 
shows that it's not a quick, it's not a case of uh, that introverts uh, can simply engage in the extroverted process like an extrovert. No, more often it's that introverts use the extroverted process through an introverted filter. So often I find that my strategy of getting information is to listen to other people and then to take out what I heard of it and to have that filter of it before I can actually analyze it and determine its worth. When asked a question, I take a few minutes. Then I pull it out of myself and then I answer it. Often just to make sure that I can give a stable, secure, uh, centered answer on what I think about it. And with extroverts, I think that extroverts engage in the introverted f process to uh, a real filter. It's always about pulling out from the inter inner world what relates to their outer experience. What fits with the information they have at their hand, the messages they've read, the books they're reading, the things that are happening around them. And often it's that we use these functions to backtrack. Um, the introvert uh, can be can use the introverted process to pull out an idea or a thought or a decision. And then they can look for evidence around them that supports this decision. And this is how they backtrack. They go in, take out, and then they backtrack and see, okay, this fits. Uh, the extrovert takes in, and then they go inside and backtrack. Okay, yeah, this aligns. And that's uh, also something that shows that there is a meetup point here. Somewhere in the middle, where the introvert is uh, backtracking, and the extrovert is backtracking, and it's just about to do it. There's a connection. The two functions start aligning and start looking fairly similar. And I think that's the dimension we call ambiversion, the things that we can all agree on, neither, either if we are introverts or extroverts. There's a whole dimension here that we can all like, relate to. It is just what happens when we go here. And the, what happens when we go here is like, for the extrovert, it's like going underwater. For the introvert, I think it's like jumping off a plane. So, with that an analogy, I hope that perhaps we have gotten a little closer to the truth of introversion and extroversion. And uh, that's all I have to say for now. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope to see you guys next time.